What's up my fellow YouTube travelers? Welcome aboard. In this video adventure, we're headed off to Universal Studios Orlando with a few nights stay at Cabana Bay Beach Resort. We hit all three parks that included Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, and Volcano Bay, the water park, which is located right next to Cabana Bay. However, I didn't film anything there because this bozo didn't think to bring a GoPro, so you can imagine it was something like this. Now this video is a little bit different than our usual chronological adventures. I wasn't originally planning on making a video because I wanted to focus on well vacationing and not document everything throughout each day. However, I figured I could just film just enough to create an overview of our resort and what the parks have to offer, while also hoping to create something useful and fun. Regardless, I hope you get some kind of enjoyment out of this adventure, so without further ado, let's get into it. at Cabana Bay for a multitude of reasons such as budget friendly, walking distance to the park, and well we dug the retro beach theme of the 50s and 60s. The double queen room was clean, spacious, and we loved the vibe. Our room included a little lounge as well, and for approximately only $164 a night over several nights built into a vacation package, there was little to complain about. So yeah, you read those dates correctly. I filmed this over six months ago. I don't really have any excuse. Stepping outside, there's two large pool areas on both sides of the resort, including a lazy river. I cannot say that we utilized the pools, but there was a bar and grill outside called The Hideaway that dished up some killer shrimp tacos. Moving back inside, you have a large cafeteria with four large projections playing retro videos and cartoons kind of up our alley, and this is connected to the Bayliner Diner that offers up a variety of food selections. Up on the second floor there's a bowling alley, and also next to that is an arcade. And if 25,000 steps a day just isn't enough, there's also a fitness center located on the second floor as well. On the first floor there's a Starbucks, I mean my god what would we do without it? There's also a universal gift shop. Moving outside, for those looking for transportation options, there's buses that take you to City Walk in the parks. However, our preferred method of getting the City Walk in the parks was approximately a 20 minute walk through a pleasant walking path. I mean, if you're going to walk for hours at a theme park, what's another 20 minutes in peace and quiet opposed to a crowded bus? But that's just us. So yeah, after breezing through security and outside of both parks, you have City Walk that is filled with restaurants, shops, and entertainment. There are a number of resorts that offer water transportation, however, Cabana Bay unfortunately isn't one of those. Our first night in town we had reservations for Margaritaville and enjoyed the margaritas, fire shrimp, fish sandwich, and fish tacos. Honestly though, we were just so excited to be on vacation, a poop sandwich would have sufficed. I'm not even sorry. So moving on, there's your two major theme parks located right there, so let's start off at Islands of Adventure. Islands of Adventure is the name you say? Okay, well that sounds like something fun. Let's go there. The port of entry section transports guests into the park and is mostly full of gift shops. We did stop at the Croissant Moon Bakery that we ordered for pickup. The Caprizi Sandwiches was a solid split. If you like booze like us, there's the Backwater Bar that we found surprisingly under the radar, just the two of us chilling and people watching. It was located right near the Croissant Moon Bakery. In the center of the park is a pond offering up some great views of the surrounding sections of the park. Working counterclockwise, you go through Seuss Landing. Cue up some silly wacky music! So yeah, for a couple adults not on psychedelics, there isn't really much here besides its wacky atmosphere. It's definitely geared toward the little ones. But we did ride the high in the sky Seuss trolley train ride, say that five times in a row, it's a must for the park views it offers up. 
As we continue along, there's the Lost Continent section of the park, where we caught the show Poseidon's Fury that has been open since the park opened in 1999. However, May 9th of 2023 it will be permanently closed as they repurpose the attraction. At this time, Universal hasn't said what will replace it, but that doesn't stop the rumor mill. My favorite being a Legend of Zelda themed attraction. One could hope. Now, I didn't really film any more in the Lost Continent, so I digress. But there are some more shops, food, and a full-service restaurant called Mythos, supposed to be excellent. But let's go ahead and move on to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. We went ahead and rope-dropped Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. We had never done it before, and, well, it was awesome. Just got off Hagrid's. That was an experience. You really can't describe it. You just have to ride it. Moving on, there's the Hogsmeade Station that takes guests to and from King's Cross Station at Universal Studios. Just remember, you'll need to have the park hopper option. So we're not heading over to Studios just yet, so let's back up here a moment and complete our roundabout of Islands of Adventure. Hogsmeade Village is very similar to the one found at Universal Studios Hollywood, with shops and dining such as Three Broomsticks and Hogshead. The snow-top buildings and magical escapism offer up an attempt to forget about the crowded herds of fellow muggles below. However, the crowd in this clip actually wasn't too bad as it was still early on in the morning. Once exiting Hogsmeade, you'll run across Hogwarts Castle perched on the hillside. That includes the ride Forbidden Journey. Equally entertaining, though, is the queue alone. The queue makes for a nice escape from the heat or rain as you work your way through the corridors of the castle. Just outside of Hogwarts is the Flight of the Hippogriff, which is a much more family-friendly coaster than for a couple of grown adults. One of my favorite themed areas is the Jurassic Park section of the park. On the same day we rope dropped Hagrid's, we headed straight for the Velocicoaster. So yeah, I had heard nothing but great things about this, so I was pumped, especially coming off my high from Hagrid's. And I'll tell you this, I never get motion sickness, ever. But we were placed in the very back, and the ride, well, it did not go well. Oh my stomach, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Wait, what about your vomit streak? I know, I haven't thrown up since June 29th, 1980. Halfway through, I felt sick. My wife does get motion sickness, and well, she was in hell on earth, and when it finally came to an end, we needed a good time out. I'm dying. I was dying earlier today, and then I died. Now I'm dead. Now Jurassic Park the ride was a bit more up my alley for the day. I failed to film more in this section, but there's obviously more food and beverage. Another ride called the Pteranodon Flyers that is for parents and their kids, also a discovery center that you would recognize from the original film. Like I previously had mentioned, I didn't really film everything, so I missed filming any of Skull Island, but it's just a small section of the park, and it has this immersive ride called Reign of Kong that we did not do this time. I'll go ahead and leave that map up here for just a moment so to give you an idea of kind of a layout of the park. Blasting on through, there's the Toon Lagoon section of the park. That's, I think, is definitely due for something better. However, there is the Dudley do Rights Ripsaw Falls that looks fun that we haven't done yet. Alright, as we wrap up Islands of Adventure, there's the Marvel Superhero Land that includes several rides such as The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man and The Incredible Hulk. Now that we've done a brief overview of Islands of Adventure, albeit not covering its entirety, let's hop back on the Hogwarts Express and head over to the studios. Now of course another option is just walking over to studios. Now if you're looking for a change of pace, a slower one, I personally prefer studios because I find it a better place to just uh, walk around and linger. People prefer Islands Adventure for the rides, I prefer studios for the atmosphere, plus I wouldn't say it's any slouch on the rides either. There's cool little sections of the park such as San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf, I mean you basically never need to go to San Francisco now. You can go check out Springfield, home of the Simpsons.
If you know me, I do love beer and breweries. Gotta stop for a duff. It's a serviceable beer, but love the atmosphere and location right next to the pond. It's a slice of joy at the parks for us. From Springfield, let's check out more Wizarding World of Harry Potter before we head for the final stretch of this video. And I'm not going to lie, I really need to finish this up as I've procrastinated long enough. Every 15 minutes you can catch the dragon on top of Gringotts Bank breathe fire. There's the immersive roller coaster escape from Gringotts, but I do love the queue. The rest of this section is great to just walk around and digest the art and thought put into this land. Call us crazy, but we rope drop the leaky cauldron for breakfast. While others are rope dropping rides, we're rope dropping eggs, baking toast, potatoes, and coffee. Alright, from here let's just pick her up at a quick pace and check out some of the food, beverages, rides, and shows you can find here at Studios. One of my final notes, we were here during Halloween Horror Nights, so there was extra activity going on during this time of year, and we paid for entrance to one of the evenings. I believe they had nearly a dozen haunted houses, and we went through several of them. You're not allowed to film, but we did enjoy the crazy Halloween atmosphere. I mean, a little f***ing crazy. Let's not lose our heads. <laughs> Our hometown of Springfield, Illinois is home of the horseshoes, so I was excited to see this. And great take, Universal. It was fantastic. This is so f***ing good. Well, that just about wraps it up, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little video adventure to Universal Studios Orlando. As always, I enjoyed creating it. I'll quickly mention that just outside the parks, we ran into one of the theme park content creators we follow, Bricks Flix, and got into a chat with him for just a moment. If you're looking for in-depth information at Universal Orlando, I'd highly recommend a visit to his channel. I do appreciate you stopping by for another video, and I apologize for such a lengthy delay between videos. Let's just call it a combo of life and laziness. Just like most things in life, you get out what you put in, so I owe it to myself to try a little harder on this YouTube adventure. We loved Cabana Bay and of course the parks and we'll someday plan another visit. Up on the docket is working on the video of our visit to Las Vegas last November. So until then, take care. Ah, Vegas! Vegas, baby, Vegas!